Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is what is refraction? And we want to know what is refraction and under what conditions does refraction take place? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In our video tutorial series on vibrations and waves, we discussed boundary behavior. When a pulse crosses the boundary between one material and another material, there's a change in speed and a change in wavelength as shown in the animation. We can think of the energy of the incident wave being carried to the boundary, and at the boundary, it's distributed in two different ways. A portion of the energy is reflected off the boundary and remains in the original material, and a portion is transmitted into the new material. We will borrow these three terms, incident, reflected and transmitted as we continue through this video tutorial series on refraction and lenses. The above situation pertains to a pulse traveling across a one-dimensional medium such as a rope. The incident pulse is approaching that boundary head-on, but a very similar behavior takes place when you have a wave traveling across a two-dimensional medium. For instance, consider a water wave traveling through deep water and approaching the boundary with shallow water. The water wave is traveling fast and has a longer wavelength than the deep water and is traveling slower and has a shorter wavelength than the shallow water. But there's an additional feature to observe here in the two dimensional situation. The water waves are approaching the boundary at an angle other than 90 degrees, other than head-on. And because of that, there's a change in direction as represented by the arrow shown here on the diagram. This change in direction of a wave at a boundary is what we refer to as refraction. Light waves behave much like waves in a rope and like waves in water. In saying that, I mean that the incident wave will approach the boundary and at the boundary we'll see a reflected wave and a transmitted wave leaving that boundary. I also mean that for that transmitted wave that's in the new material, there will be a change in speed and a change in direction for that wave. And as long as the wave, the incident wave, is approaching the boundary in a direction that's not perpendicular to it, we will also observe a change in direction. As an example, consider light waves traveling through air. In the diagram, those wave crests are represented by lines, and the direction that that wave is moving is represented by the red arrow. Let's suppose those light waves meet a boundary with glass, and when they do, they'll cross over or transmit across the boundary. They'll be traveling slower, and their wave crests will thus be closer together. There has been a change in speed and a change in wavelength. And because the direction of those incident waves is not perpendicular to the boundary, there will also be a change in direction as represented by the red arrow. This change in direction is known as refraction, and we observe it to take place as long as there's a change in medium for a light wave, and as long as that light wave is approaching the boundary in a direction that's not perpendicular to it. In most units in physics, we employ some sort of model, a way of thinking about situations that arise in that particular unit. Our model for a unit on refraction and lenses is known as the ray model of light. The ray model of light makes heavy use of ray diagrams. Ray diagrams consist of rays which indicate the direction of travel of light waves. A ray is simply a line segment with an arrowhead at the end of it. If this were a unit on mechanics, we would probably refer to a ray as a vector. And like a vector, a ray indicates the direction, the direction of travel of light waves before and after they reach a boundary. As an example, let's consider light waves traveling through air and approaching a boundary with glass. Once those waves transmit across the boundary into the glass, there would be a new wavelength, a new speed, and a new direction. We could represent the direction of these incident waves by an arrow shown here. This would be known as a light ray. And we can represent the direction of the transmitted waves by a different arrow shown here. In a ray, ray diagram, we typically don't show wave fronts, and so a ray diagram for this situation would look something like this. In this situation, the ray in the air is known as the incident ray, and the ray in the new material, the glass, is known as the refracted ray. And we notice that the incident ray and the refracted ray are not lined up with one another. There's some refraction taking place at the boundary. That is, instead of the incident ray continuing along its path, shown by this dashed pink line, instead it bends or changes its direction and is represented by the refracted ray. Refraction takes place at the boundary. It's a change in direction of the light as it crosses from one material to another material. When drawn with accuracy, ray diagrams can reveal quantitative information about the refraction situation. Let's consider light that's traveling through air and approaching the boundary with glass. 
we were to represent the situation by a ray diagram, we would draw the incident ray approaching the boundary and the refracted ray leaving the boundary. And at the location where the incident ray meets the boundary, we're going to draw a dashed line perpendicular to the boundary. This is the so-called normal line, a line drawn perpendicular to the boundary at the point of incidence. Now that we have the normal line drawn, we can identify two angles. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal line, and the angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal line. Because light is undergoing refraction, that is because it's changing its direction, this angle of incidence will not be equal to the angle of refraction. Refraction leads to some interesting visual distortions that you've likely encountered through the years. One of those is what I call the broken pencil phenomenon. If you take a beaker and half fill it with water and place a pencil in, so in it and then move the pencil from side to side, you're going to observe things like sh those shown here in this diagram. This occurs because of refraction of light. Light traveling from the submerged pencil to your eye will travel along a different path than light from the above water pencil to your eye. Light from the submerged pencil travels from water to air to your eye, whereas light from the above water pencil simply travels from air to your eye. I agree, there is some glass in between, but it's the same glass for the submerged pencil as it is for the above water pencil. It makes very little difference given how thin that glass layer is. You can make these observations yourself if you take a container of water and place a straw or pencil inside of it. Look head on at the water as you move the straw from side to side. One thing I'm certain that you will observe is that physics is pretty cool. When I was a youngster, I always loved it when our family would go to the A&W root beer stand. When I got my A&W root beer mug, I put the straw in and start slurping away, and before you knew it, the root beer was gone. I thought it was just because it tasted so good, but now that I'm a physics teacher, I know why. If you take that root beer mug and you half submerge it in a tank of water, you're going to realize that what seemed like a lot of root beer is actually a lot of glass, and that makes me want to ask for my money back. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a simulation that allows you to play with refraction, a minds on physics mission that will give you a good mental workout, a animation and explanation that goes deeper into the broken pencil phenomenon, and finally a couple of tutorial pages at the tutorial section. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.